are delighted to have with us today someone who knows about the forgiveness journey, freelance journalist, eight book author Michael Henderson. Good to have you on The Evidence. Your latest book, Forgiveness, Breaking the Chain of Hate, 70 Stories. Because Joe's story is not unique, is it? No. Uh, unfortunately, we don't always get these stories in the media. Perhaps we're I'm increasingly sure. getting them. Mm. But that's why I write my books, uh, to give people encouragement that this is a way they could go, and other people are doing it. Let's cut to the chase. Definition, forgiveness. Surrendering the right to get even. Uh, deciding like that. that your past experience, however horrible, mm. is not going to determine your future. Mm. And a journey, as Joe said. And journey you, of a lifetime. Yeah. Now, you take these stories, 70 of them that you've mm. documented. Is there a common thread, Michael, that ties them all together? I suppose the one common thread is that each person there has been willing to start with themselves, rather than pointing the finger of blame or apportion blame. Mm. Either to start with themselves to put things right or start with themselves to forgive. Mm. We're not dealing with huge bombing and murder issues every time, are we? No, sometimes it's very personal things that happen I, I was in your own community. I with, with Enoch a moment ago, mm. and uh, certainly in comparison, it seems rather a smaller issue, yet the same common thread. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Can, can we decide to forgive? Is it a conscious decision? I think it's a conscious decision, but some people can decide right at the beginning when they need to. Some people, as Joe says, are working their way through it, and it may even last a lifetime. And how should we feel if we're, sorry to cut you dry, how should we feel if we're not able to forgive, if we still have that resentment and we want revenge? Well, I don't think that we should ever judge other people or should, I don't prescribe forgiveness to people. I give that as an option, but it's an entirely voluntary thing. I try to introduce people to other people who have forgiven, perhaps in circumstances as bad as theirs, which may encourage them to do so. Some people will decide to uh, because of the, the motivation. They want to build a new Europe, build a new world, uh, end a dispute in the office, uh, deal deal with a problem with the neighbor. But not everybody's going to do it, and it's entirely a free will a thing to do. Okay, now we're talking about it, 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 it. So let's, let's focus in. I bump into you, Michael Henderson, on the street. I say, oh, you're the man who wrote the book on forgiveness. I need, I'm struggling to forgive someone. Would you tell me how to do it? What would you tell me? Well, I learned early on in life, uh, and I learned this at a Center for Reconciliation in a place called Co in Switzerland, okay. that God has a plan for the world, and if you want to find your part in that plan and take time in quiet, you may, you may find it. What if I don't believe in God, though? It doesn't matter, because God, you, you may call it the inner voice, call mm. it what you like, but there's something implanted in our hearts that can give us direction. So I would hope that perhaps a person would experiment with that, with that idea mm -hmm. of taking time in quiet. I would try and introduce that person to other people who've been through just as bad experiences. I might even give them something to read on the subject. Um, probably <laughs> your book he'd recommend, well, would you? Well, <laughs> that would be a delightful recommendation. But look, say the person that has wronged me is not caring that he has wronged me. Can I still forgive even though he or she is not repentant? If you want reconciliation, you need uh, both repentance and forgiveness. Uh, but you can forgive uh, without someone else repenting. Mm. You may not go on to reconciliation. Uh, you may not want to make that person your best friend. For instance, the Pope forgave the man who, who tried to uh, assassinate him. Right. But the man, quite rightly, stayed in prison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in other words, there's justice too. We mustn't forego justice. This is the trouble with the word sometimes. People think it's a, think it's a soft approach mm. or someone's getting away with murder when it's not that. Mm. Because in the end, the issue is something inside of me. That's right, yeah. yes. And I can resolve that issue deep yes. with inside of me. I think it's important to have the, the company you keep. I tell stories in my book about British ex-prisoners of war of the Japanese, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some who forgive, who some who don't. I think those who forgive actually get together with other people who've had the same terrible experiences but encourage them mm -hmm. in that forgiving. And so I think it's the, the company you keep that helps. Michael Henderson, thank you for calling us to break the chain of hate and holding up the high ideal of forgiveness. How about a warm thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.